apologies. Um, you kind of lost us for a moment or two there. Um, so if you've come across from the first uh, live into this one, thank you very much for, for rejoining us. Um, apologies. Let's let's just get cracking again. So where were we? Ben, if we can hit up camera two, please. So we were just cutting out the internal. We've cut out the outside shape, giving it a bit of sand. We've cut out the internal now. All right, so we can see there that we've got kind of what's going to form our draw. We already peeled off our back, so that can go, if I get it the right way around, there we go, that can go on there like that. Now, we can see that we've, we've got a box formed, all right? A little bit of gluing up, yes, but a little bit of sanding, which will go through the sander again in a moment or two. But there we are. We have a box. Now, what I tend to do is I want to get this back onto this in just the right position and minimize my cleanup and make the whole project look a little bit better. Now, what you can do, if you can see, we've got quite a distinct grain pattern here, which is going to look lovely with a drop of oil on it. Now, that can help with alignment, can't it? Because clearly you can see that the grain isn't aligned and obviously our edges won't be aligned either and that's what we're looking for is these edges but if you didn't have a bit of grain to follow what you could do is quite simply this just put two markers and then that could come back to the markers when you're doing your glue up it'll really help you out get it in the right spot so everything flows through smoothly so there we are. We have kind of the box of our bandsaw box. We need to create a draw. So that's what I'm going to do next. So let's put that to one side where I'm happy with the box. It's going to look really nice. What we've got to do here now is just make sure we're taking out the right bit. Now we can see you know, that's going to slide through there like that. But just like we did here, we've got to take off a back and we've also got to take off a front of the draw so if, it, if i bring in one of the drawers from um one of my other projects this one for instance well let's pull that drawer out we can see that we've got a back and a front and the middle chunk next job is take off the back and the front from the middle section the bit that you've just come out of this cut out of this hole and again, we need to bring in the fence for this. Now, the fence distance usually for me on this is a little bit less than the eight millimeters I used for, for the back. I tend to go about six mil. I eyeball it again, just checking it out. And literally, it's going to be like that, stable on the table. I'm making sure, making sure I've got through flow through the blade that I'm not going to get caught on the guides. But I am, however, guys, getting just a little bit close, possibly with my fingers. Why not introduce something like this? This little push pad. Yeah, we've, all, we've got push sticks. Most machines come with push sticks. We could slide on through like that. But we've got a little risk, I guess, because of the shape of this. Let me get a pencil. Because of the shape of this, we've got a little hollow at the front here. And there's a potential with the downward force of the blade that we might get a little bit of a roll. You know, that just might kick down a little bit. Now, a push stick is not going to help us with that. Yeah, we'd be able to control it if we're back here. But as we're getting a little bit thinner, why not use a push pad where you can control that kick and give yourself a nice controlled feed and safe feed through the cut. So that's what I'm going to do. A little push pad. Power's on, extraction's on, and a slow feed through. We're still going to push against the fence, and whenever I'm using the fence, I'm pushing down into this corner. I'm quite often stood somewhere on the corner of the machine, so my pushing power is naturally transferred into this corner. There we are, and there we have it. Slide on through. You might not see it because the push pad's in the way. I'll stop halfway so you can get an eye of what's happening. There you go. You can see that I'm just slicing off that bit of cut there. And that's going to be... There we go. All right. 
So carefully reach around the back and that bit. Okay, so that's just come off of there. Just like that. And now I'm going to put a, put a couple of pencil marks there so I can make sure that I align that little marker. That is going to come back when I glue up in exactly the right spot. All right, and that goes there. And then I'm going to flip it over and take another piece off the other side. So I end up with a, a front and a back. Slow, steady feed through the cut. Slow down a bit, then want to pop through. Beautiful. Machine off. Let's have a look what we've got. Fence out of the way. Don't need the fence again there. So I've got a this stage, this is where we're at. Let's get rid of that. So all right. Make sure we're going to the right way around. There we go. All right. Well, it really matters, but so we've got a front and a back. And we end up with these components now. All right. So we'll set the front and the back to one side like this. Now I need to hollow out the middle of the drawer. And I just draw this kind of kind of freehand it. Let's try and follow that sweep. We don't want to get too thin here. And I'm going to come up towards that tail. So it actually rolls around and finishes here. Let's just round that off a little bit. And this is the bit that we're going to get rid of. That's the bit that's going to go. So let's do that. All right, now we are getting all, every cut. Make sure material smaller. And you're just going to make sure you know where your fingers are and you're not getting too close to that blade. All right, and we're just going to follow this line and come out at the tip of the tail here. Uh -huh. Extraction on. All right. Start gently. Get those teeth bedded in. You can see those bearings whizzing round now, keeping me in exactly the right position with my blade. Sliding on through, slow and steady. All right. Now those are getting rather close. So let's change our grip. A little sweep round there, and then we'll come back up towards the tail. So I'm going to follow my line, rolling on round. I'm going to come over here now so my fingers ain't too close. And then we're going to come out somewhere about there. How's that? Now that's the bit that we don't need. I always tend to give it a scribble, actually, so I know what's what. So we're there. And now we're there. Hopefully you can see a draw. All right. That's the bit we've hollowed out. Front and back. We've got an internal. All right. So that all goes together like that. All right. You see how it goes. It's got to be glued yet, clearly. All right. But what we've got. Before I do anything else, before I glue up, I want to have a sand on these internals, all right? These faces here, in there, and in the inside of here, when everything's glued up, it's going to be really difficult to get in and sand, all right? Same as this one, really tough to get in and sand. So I want to do it before I glue up, all right? Now, at this stage, if you want, you can you can check your alignment and get everything where it needs to be. All right, like that. And then again, just put your couple of little pencil marks so you can come back to that when you're gluing up. So that's where we're at. We can see the drawer. We can see the box. All right. Oh, we've got a question. Far away, Colin. Okay, yes. Um, I Really, I just wanted to um, say to everybody that asked questions just before we went to, went down the first time. Um, can you re-ask them? I know Maria, you had a question on the um, the, the uh, dovetail jig, so if you could re-ask that one, my memory's not as good as it used to be. Um, and mm -hmm. someone else asked a question as well. Um, just quickly though, 
Um, one from Frederick here. It's just a question for me, Craig. It's just in reference to the off-centre chuck, the eccentric chuck that we demonstrated on Tuesday. Yep. Was there a length or limit to the timber that uh, that it would hold? There is a limit. What I would say is not something that I can give, though, because it depends on several factors. First of all, what the diameter of your project is as well, the fixings that you've used to the chuck whether you're using the tail stock, all those sorts of things. So um, always err on the side of caution. Um, good good fixings. Use the tail stock where possible. And certainly that doesn't apply if you're doing coasters and that sort of stuff. But best advice I can give, really. Um, and just one thing before we go off. Um, well, everybody's talking about these videos and having to go then to store then and buying the products that you're advising. I'm um, sorry. Can't help that one, I'm afraid. It's not why we do it. Keep those questions no, coming, genuinely, everybody. Genuinely, all joking aside, it's not why we do it. You know, as a group, uh, me, Colwyn, Chase, Ben, we just like sharing, interacting with you guys. And, you know, we pick up information from you guys as you pick up from us, you know. Um, it's just we enjoy it, really. I know, I know we do sell stuff, obviously. Um, but, yeah, we just it's just enjoyable. Oh, got another one popped up. Yeah, so this is one that from before. Um, Kevin, thank you. Sorry, I forgot your question earlier. Um, it's uh, Kevin was just asking, um, can you explain the how to correctly tension the blade? Um, it just acquired a smaller bandsaw um, and don't want to over tighten it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I do intend. I've, I've done a couple of previous videos on bandsaw setup, but I think I'm going to do one. You know, in in a, in a month or two, the ultimate bandsaw setup, which will just be fine tuning, setting up, making sure it's just so. Um, but yeah, I can cover that in a second or two. Uh, another one. Yeah, that the question for, on the dovetail jig from Maria was: um, I've cut the box joints uh, on one end of the board and want to cut the joints on the opposite end of the same board. How do I maneuver it, and which end stop does it go up against? <laughs> Okay, two seconds. I'm just going to disappear off camera. Now, Maria, what I'm going to do in a kind of week or two, I've got, I'm going to do a little jewelry box using that very jig. So stay tuned and you can see that. Um, so what we've got there is you need two like that. So that will be um, done on the one side and that will be done on the other side. And they go together like that. All right. So you need to make sure you've got two with ends that look like that, two with ends that look like that. As I said, I'm going to go through in a little bit more detail um, during the, the kind of little jewellery box making one I'm going to do in a, in a week or two. So where did we get to? We had um, something, I put it down. Didn't I? So we've got a draw. All right. We've got a fish shape draw, okay, which goes into here. All right, let's get that back onto that closer cam, Ben, if you would be so kind. All right, and we can clearly see when that's glued up, sanded up, that's going to go in there really nicely. All right. But what I tend to do, as said, before I glue up, I sand these internals. All right, use a bobbin sander for that or just, you know, hand sand just to get rid of these occasional bandsaw marks. So let's go over to the bobbin sander very quickly and give that a, a quick demonstration. And then we'll look at some gluing up because this the gluing up is important as well. So let's give that a sand on an internal. All right, so uh, just flowing around those curves. So nice and slow. All right. important you do this now really once you're glued up as i said it's really tough to get inside that drawer to uh to sand that up makes a big difference now you might be lining the drawer with felt you might be flocking the felt uh, the, the inside yeah and then we'll go with the internal on the fish bit as well on the actual main body. Nice and slow. Right, I'm not going to do this all the way, but you get the idea. 
make sure you're sanding up the internals before you glue. All right, now that is smooth and ready to go. So we'll go through the glue up in a moment or two, but let me show you one that I've glued up already. Ben, if we could hit up over onto this bench camera here. Here we go. Looks a little bit elaborate, a little bit over the top, but it's not that complicated, honest. Nothing I do that's that complicated. So let's just pop the clamps off. And as I take them off, you'll see what I've done here. All right. I like to use the one-handed clamps, no matter what they are. These are, these are little solos. I kind of grew up using these, these solo clamps, so they kind of stick with me. I know there's far more elaborate clamps around these days. But, but what I've got there is just a little clamping station that I've made up. It is literally a right angle here all right, with very smooth. Um, this is plastic-faced MDF. Now, I know the glue's not going to stick to this. So if I get any spill out, it's not going to, you know, I'm not going to end up sticking my box to there, breaking my box, trying to get it off. But what this does for me, it gives me a positive section to clamp to. I've brought in these pieces so I can, even though if I'm clamping there and there, I can you know, expand my clamping area to cover the full width of my box. I've also got a positive area down the bottom there to, to drop and help with alignment of these, these undersides. So it's a, quite a, a really simple little thing to do and just the same on the drawer. We've got two sides instead of just one. That will just come in, that will come in, and the clamps just come on there. I'll do a complete glue up with the one we've just cut in a moment. But this is where we're at. All right, you see that? You can see I've got the remnants of a, a bit of paper that I put on there. That comes off easily. The copy decks glue is almost like a rubber type stuff, and it, it doesn't adhere itself incredibly well. To, to the wood, which is what we want. All right, and there we go. All right, you can see that we've got, it's exactly the one we've just cut, isn't it? We've got very subtle sanding to do to just to get rid of the glue, really, and the minor, minor misalignment in, in that piece, but it is minor. All right, lovely little, little draw. This is one drawer on this project. I mean, you can do a number of drawers. You can see I've got a couple of bits over there with two or three drawers. Um, I've seen them with 10 or 12 drawers. And once you, this is a really good one to get you started. I find do this one, get your technique down, get your clamping organized, and then go for it. There's some really elaborate shapes there. The key really is bandsaw setup, of course, and that blade that's 3 16th 4.8 millimeter wide blade 10 tpi giving a, a really good finish and keeping your your, your 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 sanding up afterwards to a minimum I'll probably peel that off as well he says and get it started there we go see it's like a it just comes off really really easy like a silicon underneath almost. Yeah. Let's see, you can draw it on. You can transfer the image with a carbon paper. There we go. Really cool little starter basic bandsaw box. And of course, I'd sand all that up, drop some oil on it, put a little knob there as an eye, maybe. Uh, oh, yep, another question. Get rid of that paper. Just off the top of your head, Craig, do you know whether we do those blades for um, 2240 mil blade length? Two, two, I don't off the top of my head. Okay. If you go on our put in bandsaw blades on the website, bottom left, it should say uh, you can change your search by length, by width, by tooth. Go by width, pick up the 4.8 ones, and then they'll all come up on screen. If we don't see what you want, Get in contact with us, drop us a chat, an email, a phone, and we make them to order. These are made across the road. Um, we don't carry as many lengths of this speck of blade as, as others, but without a doubt, we can do this for you. Uh, great blade for, for this work. And, and any other fine scrolly stuff that you really, really fine scrolly stuff. So let's have a glue up, shall we? Let's do the body first, all right? So... Hopefully you can see that. There we are. All right. Now, the reason for using this, 
open this, like I said, it gives me something positive to fix to, gives me some positive to go down to, but I'm going to make sure that I'm getting that in the right place. That's the reason for putting those two markers on there. All right, we want to try and cut down our sanding afterwards with any misalignment here. I mean, clearly that's nudged. We want to try and flush this off and giving yourself a nice flat positive positive surface to do it really makes a difference it really helps so i'm going to leave that there i'm going to get a bit of glue now you can use regular tie bond nothing special there i think if you're using quite dark timbers um like the let me get this mexican rosewood number that i did for the best part most of this material is dark um apart from a little light piece here now you can see that dark stripe through i use type on green the external it dries darker so if you're using darker woods why not use that because you, you want to try and hide this line for the best part sometimes you, you might do them two different colors you know and you, your draw fronts can be two different colors you could do an add a laminated um stuff so kind of a combination of the chopping board video i did a little while ago in this one all right but I'm going to use, because it's fairly light wood, this does go off quite quickly. So if you've got a complex shape that you're looking to, to try and put together or you're just struggling with your clamping a little bit, another good glue to use is this stuff, Tight Bond Extend. Now, it takes longer to go off, gives you more what they call open time, uh, allows you to fiddle about and get stuff just right before it starts to starts to do its thing and glue up. This is the one I'm going to be using today. It's a fairly simple shape, and I'm fairly used to it. We've got another question, Colwyn. This one from Simon. Um, I don't understand the question, so hopefully you do. Any thoughts on urethane tyres for bandsaws? Yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah, urethane tyres. Um, we've looked at them. Um, they, they are good. They are good. They're, they're tough. They've got a good grip. You need too much grip. Um, they absorb any vibration a little bit as well. So if you can get your hands on some, I'd go for it. Maybe I could do a video on bandsaw tire changing because that can be a bit tricky. Let me know if you struggle. I can I can help you out with that. Another suggestion for a video. Frederick says um, perhaps you could do some flocking at some time as well. well Always mess it up. Yeah, never done it. Never, 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 never. Give me some tips. I need you, Frederick. Look, look, genuinely, where do I, where, where do I put it? Right. Still in the box. Still in the bag. All right. Black to go and turn. I just, I've just not done it yet. All right. Hmm. Maybe I'll do it and we'll you do a video together. All right. Flocking, if anybody doesn't know, is um, kind of gluing felt particles to the inside of a box. So rather like the the kind of bays and the felt you can get to, to line jewelry boxes and the base of uh, trophies and stuff like that. This is um, got a glue, which is the same color as the, the flock. Um, and yeah, you put your glue on and then you kind of blow this little puffer that comes with a kit and kind of blows the um the felt particles onto the glue um yeah not done it yet oh. right let's get back to this bench and do this glue up for you so nothing too special here tight bond original just dabbing a bit around the perimeter not going to go too crazy on quantity and we've only got a very thin edge that we're going to be gluing I'll spread it. Let's use a spreader. Save getting my fingers all dirty. Um, there we go. I'm spreading towards the outside. So more glue will end up on the outside than the inside because the outside is going to be easier to clean up. If I've got big glue squidges on the inside, they can be a little bit tough to get to. So let's just spread that glue towards the, the outside. Make sure we've got good coverage. All right. Okay, doke. Now, you see I've left that in position. You see I've got my two marker lines. I'm going to bring that over. Hopefully, that's good on camera. There it is. All right. And very carefully align those. All right. If I need to just tweak, 
make sure we're flush at the front. And we're coming in there. All right, push down, push down. There. Now this tie bond original does go off real quick. All right, so I'm gonna move quite quickly. There we go, that's that. How easy was that? And then I'll bring in a clamp. Let's go here. This is where the one-handed clamps really come in easily. So if I've got to do any holding of anything anywhere, I'll just nudge that there. So let me just nudge that back. Oh, perfect. Right, and I will be clamping very lightly to start with. What I'm trying to do is trying to get in the middle of my fish, in the middle of that area there, and what I'm trying to clamp very lightly to start with. Then I'll bring another clamp in to do the other end. Again, very lightly to start with. Make sure everything's where it should be. Look at the squeeze out already. That's what we look on when we're gluing anything together is a continuous squeeze out. There. More than enough pressure. It's such a light thing that we're, if we go crazy on the clamps, I guess we could start distorting and cracking. But there you go. Nice and easy. Let's do the very same on our draw. All right, make sure you get everything the right way around. Now you've put two markers on there, Craig. All right. Oh, so make sure those markers are in the right place. That's a bit better. So that one goes there. You can see the markers. So that's going to be on the outside. And clearly, that is going to be there. So edge alignment, edge alignment, make sure that we are where we want it to be. Yeah, that's good. All right. And because again, we've got this to press down to and this to, to push to as well, we can easily get it in the right spot. I'm happy with that. Drop that out of the way, drop that out of the way and apply a bit of glue. It's always worth just checking you've got no bits of fluff on the outer side here give it a sand give it a cleaner we don't want those folding back in and holding off when you're gluing up so make sure that we're, we're quite clean in these areas ideally you don't want these glue lines visible if you're using the, the same color timber as this but if you are doing a different color front and back like the contrast sort of thing then a little line is, is going to be there anyway with the contrasting color between the two timbers. So a little line isn't that important, but let's try and keep those lines as clean as we can. Here we are. Let's see, just spread in that. All right. Now we're back to the position that we want, lining up the nose. Let's bring it that way a bit. You might be able to see a bit more. There we are. There. So I'm flush there. And push down and push down so everything's sat flat. And bringing in this piece, lining up the front, lining up the back, pushing down, pushing down. Bring in this board and apply some clamps. Again, clamping pressure light to start with. So we'll get rid of that. Right, very light. And one over there. Remember, you don't need too much pressure on this. There we are. Let's just pull that back a sec. There we go. All right. So four clamps, a little bit of board, and you've got a little clamping station specific to this detailed piece. If you feel that you need another clamp in there to clamp the middle, well, you can add in any clamp that you want, as long as it's gonna reach down towards the project. You could pop this one in and do a little bit of extra clamping down low to ensure you get that. There we go. We've got a complete cut from scratch, glued up, ready to go. Now we're kind of at this stage with this now. About, I, I would leave that one about hour and a half. With that glue, an hour and a half, I could pop it out of the clamps and start clamping. The other tight bond extend, they say 24 hours, which sounds a bit extreme to me. So at least, at least overnight on that before you take it out of the clamps and start cleaning up a little bit. 
Okay. Oh, we've got another question. Yeah, some great chat going on here. So Jim B was just asking how do you clean um, your bandsaw tires and loads of suggestions here. Um, brush it off, pick it off, edge of a square, and an old Stanley knife blade, white spirit. What are your thoughts? So let's go back to the tension question that I've not answered. And then we'll look at the um, cleaning up of tires. Because if you're running a delicate blade like this, it's important that you pay attention to the, the, clean, the cleanliness of the tires and the wheels. Um, number one cause for vibration and blade movement, machine wobble, is muck on the tires. Because you, you, your blade is running on that muck, not necessarily on the tires. Extraction is important as well. Make a big difference just continuously drawing that waste away and stopping it from building up on the all-important wheels. So important. But blade tension, how much tension? Now, I don't have a gauge to, to, to work to, but what I tend to do, I always check my tension in this area here. I don't check it here. Let me just flick that off. I don't check it here because quite often you've got these guides in position and they can restrict blade movement. So, but even if you, you know, you wind that all the way up, how tight is my, you, you can't really truly tell because these guides are doing the job top and bottom, stopping this movement, not giving you a true reflection of your tension between this point here and this point here, there's nothing in contact with the blade. So that's the place to check your tension. Just there, like that. How much? I think I like about a centimetre of movement, three-eighths of an inch, with moderate pressure. You know, you don't want to be pushing. I mean, yeah, I can force it hard. I can just barely touch it. But just with a... Don't worry, you'll never break a blade through over-tension. You might kind of crease the wheels and it'll affect the bearing a little bit if you do it a lot and often, but blade breakage is often through under tension rather than over tension without blade moving around a lot in the cut and, and you know, attracting little cracks. And then eventually one of those cracks uh, goes all the way through the blade and, um, and breaks. Uh, what was the other question? We're cleaning tires, aren't we? Now, that's something that um, what I tend to do is use a dull Stanley knife blade. Um, and I put it, I'm going to use, this is criminal, my rule, but I'm going to put it there. All right, so it's almost a scraper on the wheel. And then, now this machine was pristine before we started. Let's see how much we pick up just with those few cuts. Now, I've got really good extraction. Okay. Ben, if we can go camera two. Right. You see that waste already picked up, and I've got great extraction, really clean before I started. So there's few cuts that I've done. That's the buildup already. And that's on the top wheel. On the bottom wheel, because most of the waste on a bandsaw cut is forced downwards, that's where you'll get the most waste. So, yeah, a little scrape like that is, is more than enough. Don't do anything that's going to damage the wheels, like cutting in, but just a gentle scrape. Push it against and rotate. Okay. Have we any more questions? Okay, for the moment. Well, guys and girls, we have an introduction to bouncing boxes. Why don't you go try this? You can use quarter-inch blades to roll around some of these cuts. Um, certainly the outside of this shape, you get away with it, but this tight spot in the middle, it might be a little bit tough for a quarter to quarter inch to roll around that. It's easy. Just make it slightly bigger, make that curve slightly wider. But there you go. A nice, simple bandsaw box project. One that's really going to get you going in bandsaw boxes. And trust me, they can be a little bit addictive. Um, and you can get really elaborate, some lovely colors through there. And, you know, um, yeah, and start experimenting as well with, with colors. You can see we've got some gold with some red. Um, I actually turned these little knobs myself. Yeah, wood turner as well. Um, maybe I should do some flocking on the inside of that. All right. But you can just really experiment with shapes. Okay. Well, once again, 
Thank you for your attention. Hope you've enjoyed it. Sorry for the little um, disturbance in the middle there. Um, once again, if you've got any questions that you've not uh, thought about putting uh, to me quite now, um, woodworkingwisdom at axminstertools.com. So what have we got? We've got the weekend coming up. So have a good weekend all. Uh, join us next Tuesday where Jason will be looking at turning a fruit in a different way to Coley. Thank you very much for your time, guys. Have a good weekend.